It is time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament where we are very close to that full game end thing. If Kaz and Cat goes into cash, she will have the option of going there. Um, she's kind of hurting because of her lack of innovation actions. She'd be able to accomplish a lot more in some respects. But what she can accomplish is map dominance is kind of what she's been doing. She has, a, you know, she's tied for the highest metallurgy with a bunch of people. But what she really has is that footprint lead, which lets her starve people out and just kind of like swamp the map with her cubes. Um, now she really has to be thinking about points. I guess we'll count points. Let's do that. Eight, uh, ten. I think these are worth two if they're up. 12, 13, 14. So that's pretty good. And she has a potential for another two points by just getting those back up. Uh, let's look at Cowboy, who's kind of our main competitor here. Uh, Cowboy was pretty dominant early on, um, but Kaz kind of come back. Uh, he's looking at five points plus um, a bunch right here. That's another nine, so that's 14. Yeah, he's got way more points than Kaz and Kaz. So she'll have to do something. Either she could switch demography cards with him or um, just get more points, I guess, to uh, catch up. Our probably next highest score here is Sid. She's got three, seven, ten. Not too shabby for still being in the bicameral age. Um, and she's kind of just been... Focusing on getting those public cards has kind of been what she's doing still stuck down here though And so that that kind of inhibits her like if you think about it um, Kaz and Kat most of her points are actually gotten from just being able to have a lot of population on the map And that's something that Sid is not able to get watermelon. She um, Slowly inching back up. She's got two points here three. That's all she has uh, So that's five um, but she's got, you know, getting a good pool of elders and starting to, like, come out of Africa, which is something that Sid wasn't able to do. And also um, kind of helping Cowboy a little bit and benefiting herself at the same time through the trades she's been making with him uh, to kind of hopefully get sort of some, like, power balance between the two of them so that they keep knocking each other down and give her more time to act. The person who hasn't had much time to act is Smudge. He finally, the Ice Age ended, and he was able to get into the New World, but then Cowboy got in there, too, in the same turn. Um, and so he's, you know, like, whatever advantage he could have gotten from that is, like, too late, I think. Uh, so he's going to have to come up with something. Fortunately for him, he's got his, like, boats going, so he's not stuck in these two spots, which is where he was for most of last time and probably the time before that. I don't remember. All right, let's get on the plane. We'll probably finish the game, but I don't know. I don't know how things are going to go. So, but could this could be very quick or it could take a long time, especially if I just keep talking. All righty, we went through four turns off camera. So I'll just kind of give you an update. Some big things happen on Kaz and Kat's turn, but big things respective of the individual players happened on their turns too. So um, Watermelon and Sid both started moving out of Africa. Unfortunately, Cass and Cat then took out Watermelon's cube. She's a little annoyed with her Watermelon for like helping Cowboy out. Um, and Smudge, he is getting ready to domesticate this bison here on his next turn. That's what he hopes to do uh, because that bison could potentially give him energy one, which is something that he needs to progress. Um, and I don't know how, I think I made a mistake in the past by allowing him obedience, unless he's already at energy one. Maybe he already was, because I found his cube off the board, so I assumed he was energy zero. So we'll just give that to him. That's okay. Um, Kaz and Cat, she is pretty well set up for maybe winning on her next turn, I think. Uh, she has, she got up to energy four because she found this card, which just lets her get up to energy four, which is pretty nice. Forgot to give her an elder too. Uh, so next turn she'll have two innovation actions and then she just spread around the map. She's choking out cowboy here. Oh, and she took another metallurgy advance. So no one can just like bonk her anymore uh, unless they get a metallurgy boost as well. So it's now to see what cowboy can do. Then we'll go through, and maybe Kaz and Cat's next turn will be our last. We'll see. Just a quick note before I start Cowboy's turn. I hadn't 
completely finished all of Kaz and Cat's population action. She just had so many. I'm not used to that. Um, oh, and also, yeah, so she used the rest of her actions to knock down people's elders using globalization. So she kind of nicked everyone. Uh, now let's get on to Cowboy. So that's going to uh, significantly decrease Cowboy's points, which is what's really important for her. She would like to beat Cowboy. Um, so she's looking at 10. Ah, I'm not going to count the points for you again. We'll, we'll do it later. All right, let's move on to Cowboy. Cowboy went into chaos, losing his last remaining Metropolis. He's got a unit there and a unit there. He would have probably lost that unit, except that that the unit here, the Metropolis, would have been starved out anyway by all those people. And I wonder if they maybe would have won a siege? Uh, they was, yeah, they probably should have just been able to besiege it, and that would have been good enough. But we didn't do that. The piece got lost anyway. We're just going to move on. Looks like it's about done, but we'll see if Sid Watermelon or Smudge have anything to say about that. Alrighty, so we saw some last-ditch uh, card auctions, basically. <laughs> Each player got some on their cards. I think Sid kind of won out because she got uh, a card on on Smudge's turn as well. Um, poor Watermelon went into chaos and possibly her last turn. We're about to start Kaz and Cat's turn, but I thought this would be a good time to tally score because she's going to need to keep that in mind anyway, so I might as well do it on camera so you know how people are doing. So uh, Sid has is actually doing pretty well. She's got three, eight, 10, 13 points. That's pretty good for where she's at in the game. She's further back than everyone except for Smudge, and Smudge hasn't been doing much. Uh, over to Watermelon here. Watermelon's looking at five, eight. Not so nice. Smudge himself has five, seven, 12, so he's actually doing better than Watermelon. Keep in mind, the, the the final score that they get is actually important to them in the larger context here, because if you're closer to the person who wins, you're going to actually lose less on that board. So it's a little different. There's this meta game happening as well. Um, over to Kaz and Cat, she has 8, 10, uh, plus 8. No, no. What am I doing? Yeah, 8, 10, plus... Um, plus 3 is 13, plus 2 is 15. So she only has 15. She's still in the lead, though. And if she can reset these elders, that will be another 3 points. So that would be 18. All right, over to Cowboy. He's got 3, 5, plus whatever his idea cards are, which is 3, 5, 10, 12. So right now, Kaz and Cat is in the lead. If she can go into Chaos, she wins it right here. I kind of acted as though that were a foregone conclusion. Um... She does have a card here that will help her. She can subtract three from her stability roll. So right now her stability roll, um, if she rolled, she adds plus four to it, right? So that means she has to roll uh, a one, basically, to go into chaos. But that will make it so that she has to roll a four or less, I believe. So what, what does she do for her one innovation action? We'll just go ahead and do this on camera. Um, she's got... Those resets there, which might be the way she wants to go since she has, yeah, this also lets her draw three cards, which she can immediately play. So she's looking pretty good. Um, I think she'll go ahead and take this card just to ensure the Elder resets, so she has the extra points from that, because she does score in Elders. That would be big. And then I guess I'll come back to you when I get to the stability roll. Nah, nah, we'll do it on camera. Okay, so first of all, what does she want to do? Oh, she has two things that can subtract from her stability roll. So she can make it a sure bet, right? Subtract seven. So she basically has the game. But let's go ahead and play it out anyway, because that's more fun. Yeah, I was thinking she'd play the right-hand side of this, but she can play the left-hand side, which is subtract seven. Uh, is that a sure bet? No, that's only subtract three total. Oh, but then it's still a sure bet. Okay, yeah. Derp. All right, so she'll play both of these. This gives her another elder. I mean, her final score matters, so we do need to play this out because that's going to affect, like, whether people get eliminated or not, right? Um, so we have the programmer. She gets to draw three cards. One, two, three. We'll look at those in a second. 
and she's going to subtract 3 from her stability roll. All right, so we'll just kind of set that out so we remember that. Um, this one, she draws two more cards, and so she's for sure going into cast. Now let's look at the card she has, which is kind of difficult for me right now. What we're looking for is things that will give her more points, which is basically like elders, right? She can boost her metallurgy, that's not going to matter. Gives her a reset though, which is nice, and she does have the things for that. The left hand side gives her professional women. Um, she's not that interested in that. This is gives her some stuff, doesn't really help terribly much right now for winning. We're just going to focus on that. We'll go ahead and play the left hand side of this one, see what other two cards we get. That gives her an Elder Reset. Two more cards. And the stars would actually help her. And that's an N. She gets first dibs on that. No one else has more than one, so she'll go ahead and take that for one. I know, no, yeah, actually we can do that in this order. Um, this one gives her another two cards and an elder. How many metropoli does she have? One, two, three, four four currently. So she can't have any more elders, so that's not going to do anything there. But the two cards will. I don't know why I'm putting it up there. All right, two more cards. An elder reset, that's nice. And I guess we'll just bump up the infrastructures. Did I do that? Yeah. All right, metallurgy goes to four. I mean, she's kind of just destroying them now. Oh, she has to do, we're not going to bump up the infrastructures because then she has to lose elders. All right, um, what's this card? Some fecundity decreases. That actually gives her fewer points because as you get higher up here, it's a point per each. So kind of like the early game maximum of not wanting to have too high of population is destroyed now. That's not, not a thing anymore. Um, but this can act as an elder reset, gaining an elder. So we'll just reset that. She's not going to play that thing or that thing. That just loses elders. Get an elder reset from this. I don't think she's going to worry about the fuel. And she can just save the rest of her cards. It doesn't matter. All right, so that's going to be the game. She's going into chaos. We'll roll. It doesn't matter what she gets. She goes into chaos. And that's going to end it. Um, I'm going to tally the score. Next time you see me, we'll be over there where I will talk about where people ended up and all of that stuff. Um, really like this game. I'm kind of sad I'm going to be putting it away. I, I wish I'd gotten to it earlier. Um, but I was enjoying other things, so that's okay. All right, we'll see you soon. Alrighty, so let's take a look at this. So our final scores were um, Kaz and Cat had a resounding 22 points, which was huge. Our, our second place finisher was not Cowboy, it was actually Sid. Cat took Cowboy down hard in that second to last turn. Um, and then Cowboy had 13, which is decent. Smudge 11, Watermelon a paltry eight points. Really hard on her. Um, so what I did was I added those up, took the average roughly, got 14 points. That's the average if you had above that. You take that amount that you had above that, you multiply it by 100, that gets added to your score on the board. If you get below that, you take that amount, multiply it by 100, and take that off your score. So. Looking here, Kaz and Cat was like negative 200 some, so now she's 674, doing very well for herself. Um, Sid got 100 points off of it, so she got a little bit out of the water. Not too far, but pretty good. Um, Cowboy, did I adjust him yet? I don't think I adjusted him yet. Yeah, he should go down um, 100 points. So he's still in the game, you know, but he did so well. That's sad that, that he just kind of got slammed at the end, but that's kind of how this game is. Smudge went down a little bit, but he had like a, a very positive score, so not too bad. And then finally, Watermelon, unfortunately at negative 975. I think our cutoff is negative 750. I think that's what we agreed on. I think for a while it was negative 700, but then we went to negative 750. Maybe I'm wrong. But unfortunately, Watermelon is going to be out of the game. So although she tried to kind of like create this power struggle between the two people 
who were on top being Cowboy and Kaz and Cat. It just wasn't enough. Kaz and Cat was able to work it out with that dominating map presence. Um, the map is very important in this game, and that's easy to forget. And so, and footprint can be as powerful as metallurgy, if not more so. So, it seems like just metallurgy is what's important in terms of conflicting with others, but there's so many different paths you can take to take other people out in this game and to get what you want. And Kaz and Cat did the best of that. So we'll see you next time for the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. Let's see how many people we have left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we're going to have to play another game before we get to Ghetto. Ghetto, the player count is 10, I think. We want to get down to that. I'm going to try to make the point... I mean, with this, I, I multiplied it by 100 because I wanted things to shift more. Um, my av The fact that I go off of averages kind of makes it so that this whole leg is taking a really long time, but... I think if I make the multipliers higher, I don't know, it kind of averages out, but, you know, if you have more extreme swings, it's more likely you'll run over that negative spot. So, trying not to make this take the rest of my life. I don't know how much longer that can be. We can die at any moment, right? So, there we are. Uh, see you next time. I don't know who I'm going to play. I don't know who we're going to play with. There's a lot to figure out.